So when I talk about a neuroscientific enlightenment, the principles underpinning this are using neuroscience and the advances in neuroscience for the benefit of humankind, free from political and media interference. And I suppose if you want to sum up my position in relation to drugs, it would be that all drugs are equal under science, so humankind can extract maximum benefits. That, I think, is unquestionably true scientifically, but it's not true in terms of politics and regulation. So yeah, the, the core of my lecture was how we should use neuroscience advances to improve treatments for patients. And the way to do that is to break down some of the ridiculous regulations we have about so-called illegal drugs. And I was doing it from the perspective of Scotland, which led uh, the, uh, the first enlightenment, the, the, this, this process where scientists took control of decision making. And I want the same thing to happen now in terms of drugs as it did in terms of astronomy and physics and, uh, and medicine. So what is a drug? Of course, this is what the drinks industry is consistently trying to persuade us. That alcohol is not a drug, so if you say no to real drugs, you can then drink alcohol without getting in trouble. And this, this uh, logic that if it's legal, it's not a drug, is an enormously powerful one that is cultivated with enormous effort through vast armies of lobbyists by the drinks industry. You know, false facts are, are, are an interesting phenomenon, be, and I think it's because people have what's called a primacy effect. The first time you learn something, you, you're likely to remember it. And that novelty effect can, can be very difficult to shake, and, and particularly if you believe it's coming from a reputable source. So, and of course, then also you have the, is, the complicated issue then that a lot of people buy into those facts. Even when they know they're wrong, they'd rather not change it, because telling, telling the world that they were wrong is also a sign of being, you know, of being fallible. So it's a complicated mixture of psychologies. Cannabis is probably the oldest medicine in the world. People have found evidence of it being used in China two to 3,000 years ago, um, and other in Egypt as well. It was legal as a medicine in the UK to 1971, when it was banned when, because a couple of GPs in London started prescribing it for people to use recreationally. And for party political reasons, the government of the day decided rather than just ban the doctors, it would ban the drug to show it was being hard on drugs. And this has really been very hard on the people who would benefit from medical cannabis, people like Queen Victoria. Now, she used cannabis regularly to deal with period pains and the pains of child, childbirth. Sometimes I think that maybe the reason she had so many children was that she might have used it at other times as well when she was reclining on the moors at Balmoral. As far as I know, it was never busted. The Scottish government's made good progress. Minimum pricing, uh, reduce the drink driving limit, evidence-based policies which will save lives and save health costs. Now we could move further forward. I think you should ban alcohol advertising. I think you should try to reduce the consumption of alcohol being bought in supermarkets, for instance. And, and uh, I think those things would then have an, an extra benefit, just like they have had in France. And then beyond that, I think we should, you know, let's look at the other issues, the other drugs that are being used. I mean, you know, they're less damaging than alcohol, yet they're illegal, drugs like cannabis. Huge medical potential in cannabis. Scottish patients are, are breaking the law every day, growing their own. You know, let's take, let's put that to one side, let's put it back. It was in medicine. Queen Victoria used it in Balmoral 100 years ago. Why isn't it suitable for Scottish people now? So let's open up, let's have a liberal, rational view about medicines like cannabis, like MDMA, and let Scottish doctors use them for Scottish people.